Hello everyone. Finally, by summarizing all the points until now, let's enable encryption in SQL Server by meeting all the requirements. As you can see, I have this server and client. Suppose you are connecting to C server without encryption and your application is also not encrypting any connection. Suddenly, your business requirements changed and now you and your application should connect to database with encryption. In other words, you should enable encryption in connection to SQL Server now. Your manager is saying enough unencrypted connections as this is not safe. So in this case, SDBA, what you should do? You can just go to the database server and enable force encryption option with self-generated default certificate of SQL Server. As we discussed, this forces all the connections to be encrypted. There is a problem with this. Let me show you. We go to client and try to connect again. Bang! As you can see, your client started to fail with certificate chain error. What does this mean? As you might remember from our first session, clients and servers perform TLS handshake while establishing TLS encrypted connection. In this handshake, server passes SSL certificate for client verification. If the certificate is self-signed certificate and not provided by certificate authority, the connection fails in certificate verification phase. We are also facing the same issue, as SQL Server default certificate is self-signed and not provided by certificate authority, our connection is failing. You have three options here. First, you can add trust server certificate to true parameter in your application's connection stream so that clients skip certificate verification phase and trust any certificate. This is not recommended sometimes, okay, as there is security risk. Your client should not trust every certificate. Second option, you can generate self-signed certificate and attach it to SQL Server. Afterwards, put this certificate in trust certificate store in the client side so that client trusts only this certificate, also not signed by CA. Security risk here is not so high, although there is. Self-signed certificate is often tagged as not safe. And the last option is attaching CA signed certificate so that clients verify in secure way. This is recommended approach. Let me show you. So, we are failing. Let's add trust server certificate parameter. As you can see, our connection is succeeding now. And our connection is being encrypted. This is first approach, okay? You can just easily add this parameter in your application connection stream, okay? If it supports, of course. Second, let's now switch to second option. We go to SQL Server and run this command in PowerShell to generate self-signed certificate. As we also discussed in our previous sessions, you should follow SQL Server certificate requirements while generating certificate for SQL Server, both self-signed and CA-signed. First, subject name should be fully qualified domain name of the server. And also, the certificate should not be expired, and the certificate should be located in local machines my store. Key spec should be key exchange. You had better generate certificate with strong algorithm. I mean, two, five, six. Okay. Then let's run it. After you run this command, certificate has been imported to MMC local machine store. Afterwards, you give necessary permission to SQL Server service account. Let's now attach this certificate to SQL Server as our certificate is ready to be attached. Now, SQL Server started to use this self-signed certificate. Let's go to client machine and remove trust server certificate property and connect. As you can see, we are failing again because we attached cell sign certificate and client is not being able to verify. To resolve this, we go to server and export the certificate.
after exporting the certificate, we put this certificate in client machines, trust certificate store. Let's now try to connect. As you can see, we can connect now, although without, uh, we are not specifying trust service certificate. Okay. So th this was the second approach. Let's switch to last approach regarding CA signed certificate. Steps are the same. Okay. I don't want to repeat. Only difference is that you don't need to import and export certificate because CA's root certificates are already inside Windows server by default. Okay, so you should skip import and export part. These root certificates are maintained by Microsoft by each Windows updates. For example, if you get certificate from DigiCert certificate authority, this certificate is used for verification. You should note, if you are buying CA signed certificate from the authority not listed here, you should of course import root certificate of that authority. Okay. That's all. We now know how to encrypt connection to SQL Server. Let's keep learning always. Thank you.